Hello viewers, if you're anything like me, you probably want your car to be in the best possible shape. And one of the most important things here is the engine, which to run efficiently needs to be looked after. If you do so, your car will be nicer to drive and, even more importantly, more reliable. The good news is, there is a lot of maintenance work that you can do on your own as it doesn't require much skill or any special tools. And as an additional upside, you'll learn something new while doing this. So here are 10 simple tricks that will make your car's engine smoother and more reliable. We'll start with several things that must be done periodically and within specific intervals. Changing the engine oil is by far the most vital maintenance step for any vehicle, so obviously this is not something you'll want to skip or delay. Besides lubrication, the engine oil also takes away some of the heat generated during the combustion and helps keep the engine clean by dissolving carbon buildups and sludge. With time, the oil becomes degraded and contaminated and needs to be changed. And when buying it, make sure it's the correct viscosity and meets the exact specification set by the car maker. You'll find info on this in the vehicle's manual or you can ask us here in the comments box. Lastly, whenever changing the oil, a new filter must be installed. The oil change is not a complicated job and it shouldn't take more than an hour of your time, especially if you don't have to lift the car on jack stands. Apart from the oil and filter, you'll need a suitable socket to loosen up the drain plug and an oil wrench. Next, to run correctly, every engine needs a steady flow of fresh, clean air. And that's where the air filter comes into play, which removes dust, dirt and other particles from the air stream that goes towards the engine. And with time, these contaminants will accumulate on the filter's surface and obstruct airflow. This starts the engine of much needed air to create an ideal mixture, which reduces engine's performance and increases emissions. Replacing the air filter is one of the easiest maintenance tasks in a car. In most cases, this can be done within a few minutes, using only hands or some basic tools, such as a screwdriver. In a gasoline engine, the air-fuel mixture is ignited during combustion with a spark plug. But to do so, this engine component has to create a strong spark. And if the plug wears out or gets covered with carbon buildup, which does happen with time, it may lose its ability to ignite the mixture. This results in a misfire, poor engine performance and reduced fuel economy. Changing spark plugs is easy, assuming there is nothing in the way to block the access. Some basic tools, which include a ratchet and sockets, will be needed here as well as a torque wrench. As with air, the engine also needs a steady flow of completely clean fuel, which is why all cars have fuel filters. Its job is to remove all foreign particles, such as rust or dirt, that may have found their way into the fuel tank. Predictably, fuel filters get dirty and clogged with time, so they need to be replaced every so often. This is especially true for modern common rail diesel engines, whose high-pressure fuel pump may get damaged if the fuel filter is dirty. When replacing the filter, finding it may be the most challenging part. If you're lucky, it will be somewhere inside the engine bay, like here. But in most cases, this filter will be near the fuel tank, meaning you'll have to get underneath the car. Next, we have several components that may get covered with dirt or sludge, which affects the engine's performance. First is the MAF sensor, which is located between the air filter and the intake manifold. Its job is to measure the amount of air flowing toward the engine. Inside this sensor, there is a heated wire whose temperature and consequent electrical resistance change as the air passes around it. With time, dust, dirt or oil might form buildups on the wire offsetting its readings. And as a result, the engine may be running rich or lean. Luckily, cleaning the MIF sensor is in most cases a straightforward job that usually fixes the issue. Just remove it from the engine bay and carefully clean its hot wire with an electronic cleaner or another specialized solvent. However, don't touch the wire with your hands or anything else as it's fragile and gets damaged easily. Next, we have a throttle body which controls the engine speed by regulating how much air goes into it. There is a plate inside it which opens and closes depending on how much you press the throttle. 
Like with the MAF sensor, the throttle body's internals may get covered with dirt, carbon buildups and oil. This reduces the engine's performance, decreases fuel economy and in some cases causes rough idling and stalling. Again, sufficient amounts of carb cleaner should dissolve these buildups and sludge. You might even need a toothbrush or something similar to remove stubborn deposits. In addition, you'll have to remove the throttle body from the intake manifold while doing this. Every engine has a PCV, or positive crankcase ventilation, which relieves the engine of pressurized oil fumes created by heat and blow-by gases. In most cars, this is done with a hose that connects the engine's cylinder cover and the intake manifold. This way, the gases from the crankcase are vented back into the engine, where they get burnt off. There is also a PCV valve, which controls the flow of crankcase fumes. These oily fumes, however, may start condensing while passing through the PCV valve and hoses. This forms sludge and buildups, which may block off the PCV system, causing excessive pressure within the engine's crankcase. To prevent this from happening, you should periodically take out the PCV valve and hoses and clean them thoroughly with a carb cleaner or similar solvent. And while doing this, always check the PCV valve, as the spring inside them, which regulates the flow, may break or become weak. Here's a simple trick. Shake it like so, and if it rattles, it's good. Lastly, we have components that may wear out or break with time. But instead of specific intervals, these are only replaced when showing signs of wear. An auxiliary belt, or as many call it, a serpentine belt, is used to drive the components like the alternator, coolant pump and aircon compressor. Because they are made from rubber, these belts may become brittle with time and eventually break apart. When this happens, there will be nothing to drive all the parts we mentioned earlier. To prevent this from happening, you should periodically check the auxiliary belt and look for any signs of wear. A functioning belt has to be in one piece, without visible cracks, and neatly wrapped around all surrounding pulleys. While at it, check the belt's firmness by pressing it with your finger. The serpentine belts are easy and fast to replace, assuming the axis is not too complicated or obstructed. Next, we have the hoses through which the coolant flows between the engine, radiator and various other components. Having to deal with engine vibrations and pressure in the cooling system, they have to be firm and flexible at the same time. Otherwise, they could crack or burst, resulting in a massive coolant leak and engine overheating. So if you see a coolant hose that's cracked, swollen or feels rock hard when pressed, replace it immediately. When doing this, you'll have to drain the coolant and, after the work is done, vent out the coolant system correctly when pouring the coolant back in. While working under the hood, you should always keep an eye out for any leaks. Leaking oil, coolant or power steering fluid are the liquids you might expect to come across here. And if noticing any of this, you should find out what's causing the leak and get it fixed. By stopping the leak, your car won't be losing vital fluids and you won't have to top it up every so often anymore. Moreover, these escaping liquids may spray or leak over sensitive engine components, potentially causing them to fail. For instance, we have this oil cooler and a gasket beneath it, which eventually becomes brittle and starts leaking. And when that happens, the escaping oil will drip all over the alternator, which sits directly underneath. If left like this for longer, the alternator will eventually fail. How hard or expensive may be to fix a leak depends on what's causing it in the first place. Obviously, it's much faster and simpler to replace a bad valve cover gasket than it is to do the same with a leaking crank seal. With all that covered, there is only one question left. How often any of this should be done? For things like oil, filters or spark plugs, you can refer to your owner's manual. MIF sensors, throttle bodies and PCV valves should be cleaned once a year or even less often. Lastly, there are serpentine belts and coolant hoses, which you should check every few months. So there you have it, viewers. I'm sure that after watching all this, basic car maintenance doesn't seem that complicated anymore. Moreover, I hope your car is running much better now thanks to these tips. If so, give us a big thumbs up on this video and subscribe to our channel. Even more, while spending time under the hood, you might have noticed something suspicious or unusual. If you want to know more about that, check out other videos here or go to our site, 
mechanicbase.com for other automotive repair guides. Bye!